Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe so your fellow players don't abandon your campaign for another one. Or two. Maybe. Today we're building Sykes from Kingdom Hearts to celebrate the release of the new DLC for Kingdom Hearts. But if I'm being honest, it's really just because I love Kingdom Hearts. I like making Kingdom Hearts builds, and it's actually one of the things that got this channel started. When I first started off, I would share videos on Reddit, and the Dungeons & Dragons Reddit didn't exactly love them. But when I would share something to the Kingdom Hearts Reddit with one of my Kingdom Hearts characters, they were actually very nice and very supportive, even though probably not all of them played Dungeons & Dragons. So this is sort of to thank those early subscribers, and also to plug my Let's Play channel, Two Lock & Mango, where we're playing through the first Kingdom Hearts. Self-promotion makes you angry, store that anger. This is a barbarian build. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to get our power from anger hitting harder the more pissed off we become. Next, we need to get lunar, with the power of the moon letting us hit our enemies hard enough to send them to the moon. Finally, death is boring, so let's not do that. Instead, we'll get the ability to not die, and some contingencies to make us easier to bring back to life if we do. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. Multiclassing shouldn't be too much of a headache for this one. Strength is number one. I wasn't sure what kind of weapon he wields. Google says it's a claymore, which just confirms that Nomura doesn't know what sword look like. Anyway, it's big. Constitution after that, you've got health bars and face scars. I guess I've got some bars, too. Dexterity next, you dash around the battlefield, it's tricky to keep up with you. Follow that up with charisma, you've got a quiet resolve that really works on some people, and that big X on your face is very intimidating. Intelligence is a bit low, but I'm sure you picked up a little bit of information when you were Ansem's apprentice. We're dumping wisdom because you signed up to be Ansem's apprentice. For a race, I was going to do Varian Human, but his ears are pointy before you fight him in Kingdom Hearts 2, and every time I make a Varian Human, everyone loses their mind, so let's go with Half Elf. This gives you plus two charisma and two stat boosts of your choice. Strength and dexterity will be better if they're higher, as would every stat, but I guess those will work best for you. You get 60 feet of dark vision, so no stress about long, moonlit walks. Your Fey ancestry gives you advantage on saves against being charmed, and you can't be put to sleep by magic. You can grab two skills of your choice as a Half Elf, I'd say investigation, and actually religion. The organization is kind Kind of um uh, culty for your background go for sage to get arcana and history proficiency you know for a violent rage fighter you're pretty learned one might say you're a barb smartian that name sucks i'll think of a better one kick things off as a barb learnian that are still bad first level barbarians get to pick two skills from the barbarian list athletics and intimidation are absolute must for an angry boy you also get unarmored defense for a barbarian that means your ac is 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier while you're not wearing armor black coats don't offer much in terms of protection but they also won't weigh you down more importantly you can go berserk with a rage giving you advantage on strength checks and saves extra damage with strength based attacks and resistance to bludgeoning piercing and slashing damage keyblades should be slashing i think even though they look like they should be bludgeoning. Either way, you're covered. Second level smart variants, also terrible, get reckless attacks, letting you give yourself advantage on your attack rolls, but you give the enemy advantage to hit you. Maybe you accidentally drop one of your claymores or something. You also have danger sense, letting you get advantage on dexterity saving throws against spells and traps you can see. Feel like the designers just wanted to give you proficiency with dexterity saves, but every other class only gets two, so they added this ability. Still, pretty nice to have. Third level Barbarians, I'll just give up at this point, could use a Primal Path, and Berserk may be the title of your ability, but it doesn't let you use the power of the Moonlight in Dungeons & Dragons. Zealot Barbarian, on the other hand, will let you use Divine Fury, letting you add 1d6 plus your Barbarian level in Radiant Damage to the first melee attack you make per round. So all those big Radiant Booms are an option. Technically, you could use Necrotic instead, but that's not very moony. You're also a warrior of the gods, meaning that if your spooky, necromantic boss man wants to revive you, he doesn't need to use material components. That makes you cheaper than Demix, so it's kind of weird that he keeps hiring that dude. By the way, just laying down a bold guess for future reference, Demix is the master of masters. If I'm right, this is evidence. If I'm wrong, nobody cares. Fourth level barbarians get an ability score improvement or a feat. I'm going to recommend capping your strength as quickly as possible. Hitting hard is fun. Not hitting hard is less fun. Fifth level barbarians get fast movement, increasing your speed when you're not wearing heavy armor so you can run down a dog a duck or a child when you break it down like that the bad guys in kingdom hearts seem way more evil you also get an extra attack letting you attack twice as an action for big damage from your big sword i guess sixth level zealots get fanatical focus letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per rage it's like the fighter ability indomitable but with four uses per day so it's four times better and you get it three levels earlier 
that's a good deal. Seventh level barbarians get feral instinct, giving you advantage on initiative rolls, and you can act normally in the first round, even if you're surprised, as long as the first thing you do is enter a rage. Speaking as someone who has played a barbarian, let me just say that's probably going to be what you do anyway. I heard Sora talking trash about the moon. Don't let him get away with that. Eighth level barbarians get an ability score improvement, letting us cap off our strength for the most accuracy and damage possible. You're a late game boss. You should hit like it. Ninth level barbarians get brutal critical, letting you add another damage die when you land a critical hit. So for a great sword, which would be the standard claymore they would deal 2d6 slashing damage and unfortunately that means the extra die is a d6 but if you went with something like a great axe that deals 1d12 slashing damage standard so the die would be a d12 considering how Sanks's weapon is not really a real weapon i think it's fair to reflavor it to be whatever you'd like 10th level zealots get zealous presence letting you give 10 allies advantage on their attack rolls and saving throws for one turn once per long rest ideally it would be 12 allies but Really, Xehanort's favorite Xehanorts are being held off for the final battle. This should work with Zigbar, Repliku, Larkseen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitz, and whoops, I started doing Reindeer. 11th level Barbarians get Relentless Rage, meaning that if you should drop to 0 HP while you're raging, you can make a DC 10 Constitution saving throw. Passing it, you're at 1 HP instead. This difficulty increases by 5 each time you use it, but resets when you take a short rest. If you nap during the daytime, that means you can stay up all night stargazing and not dying. Sounds fun. 12th level barbarians get another ability score improvement or a feat, and we use great weapon master a lot, so what the hell, let's mix it up. The charger feat lets you attack as a bonus action after you take the dash action and add an extra 5 damage or shove 10 feet instead of the standard 5 if you've moved at least 10 feet in one direction. If you need to, you can now blast 100 feet before smashing someone. 13th level barbarians get another brutal critical die, so here's a good reminder that reckless attacks effectively double your chance to land a critical hit, so considering your great axe crits would be 4 d12 plus 8 damage at this point i'd say it's worth a shot 14th level zealots get rage beyond death meaning that if you hit zero hp while you're raging you stay up and get to keep attacking you still roll death saving throws but you don't die even if you die if you roll three death saving throws that's right you get to stay up and keep fighting until your rage ends quick reminder you can actually enter a rage while still in a rage and you have five rages per day, which is five minutes of full immortality as long as you're either making an attack against someone or someone is making an attack against you to keep all your anger juice flowing. 15th level barbarians get persistent rage, meaning your rage only ends if you want it to. Technically, someone could just run away from you and hope you don't attack them to end your rage early, but now that sticks around for a minute or 10 rounds, no matter what. Which means 20 attacks with extra attacks, so if they can't get away from you, they're dying first. And remember, you can enter a rage while raging. I know we just talked about it last level, but that means five minutes of immortality, regardless of whether or not someone's attacking you or you're attacking someone. 16th level barbarians get another ability score improvement, and why not grab Great Weapon Master even though I said we weren't going to. This lets you subtract 5 from your attack roll to add 10 to the damage of a weapon you're wielding two-handed, and make another attack as a bonus action if you kill something or land a critical hit. Keep in mind if you're using a charger attack, that is your bonus action, so you wouldn't get the extra attack. But now you can make that attack's damage modifier plus 24 while you're raging with the charger bonus and Great Weapon Master ability, so it's not a huge loss. 17th level barbarians get their last brutal critical improvement for 3 extra extra damage die on your critical hits, meaning with a great axe that's 5d12 slashing damage. Sykes? More like, yikes. 18th level barbarians get indomitable might, meaning if you roll lower than your strength score on a strength check, you can use your strength score instead, so at this point 20, that's pretty darn good. 19th level barbarians kind of get our last ability score improvement, get some more constitution, it helps your HP and armor class. Remember, a constitution buff buffs your HP retroactively as well, so that's an extra 19 HP at this level, rather than just one. Our capstone is the 20th level of barbarian for primal champion, adding four to your strength and constitution score, and letting you ignore the standard 20 point cap. You also get unlimited rages, which makes you effectively immortal until someone finds a way to stop your anger. Jump the gun, sorry. Now that we're level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're effectively immortal until someone finds a way to stop your anger. While you're immortal, your damage modifier is 21, with two attacks per round and an extra bit of radiant damage once per round as well. Finally, you're incredible at chasing down a fleeing foe, with the ability to move 100 feet and still attack in the same turn, meaning nobody is getting away from you. For weaknesses, your wisdom and intelligence scores aren't great, meaning you'll be failing some saving throws that could make you fall out of your rage. You're also missing out on some dexterity and constitution because of the two feet 
feats we took. Not a huge issue, but your AC could be better. Finally, flying foes could be hard to take down without any ranged weapons. But your vertical jump distance is 10 feet and your horizontal jump distance is 24, so just find something to jump off of and lay the smack down. Watch those reckless attacks, though. If someone else could go berserk, it could mean you're calling it an early night. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. And if you like me and Kingdom Hearts, why don't you check out our side channel, Tulak and Mango, and watch me coach up a Kingdom Hearts noob.